This is Fujifilm's XS20, and this is my second time attempting to record this video. Because the first one I recorded, I feel like it didn't do justice to what this camera actually does and what it brings to the table. A lot of people have been talking about the FX30 and if you should get that. And personally, I feel like for the feature set out of this camera, even though it's lacking some of the I.O. capabilities of the FX30, this camera, in my opinion, if you swapped out the Fujifilm badge for one that said Sony at the exact same price point, autofocus be damn, which has never failed me once while using it, I would honestly believe this would be the best selling cinema style camera in the world. But we're gonna talk about that because this camera right here is well worth the price of admission and I believe it looks really damn good at the exact same time. Right off the bat, you're gonna notice the small size and I absolutely love it. It's about the exact same size and dimensions as an Olympus OM-1N, Olympus OM-2N. For those of you that know those film cameras, it's just small, S-M-O-L, small. Uh, the battery grip is a little bit longer, but it houses this fantastic battery that is also found in the Fujifilm X-H2, X-H2S, and the GFX cameras. To me, that's a win. Yes, it only has one SD card slot, but I'm not really worried about that because honestly, how many non-cinema cameras have duplicating recording that have simultaneous recording or even have relay uh, whenever it comes to prosumer cameras? So not really worried. Even whenever I'm sending out to an Atomos Ninja V to record the ProRes RAW or the Blackmagic RAW, to a Blackmagic Video Assist from this camera. You can't record to multiple devices at one uh, whenever you have those plugged in just regularly with the regular SSDs that come with them. So again, I'm not really worried about that. This does more than enough. It's a small body, it has IBIS, it's able to export raw video. It has 10-bit internal 422 for all of you in-bit uh, internal 422 heads. And uh, H.265 looks amazing. The biggest uh, trick for this never comes to video is the 6.2 uh, K open gate, which I believe is amazing. To me, I feel like the footage from this uh, edits better and has more latitude than the 8K from the X-H2, even the downsampled 4K from the X-H2, and the same with the X-T5. The colors out of this, uh, the information in the shadows have been fantastic. I truly do think that open gate is uh, just really a great deal for getting this for 12 hundred dollars I think thirteen hundred dollars without a lens that to me is an absolute steal and this makes it one of the best not only run and gun but just full production cameras that I believe that you can get especially with the ability to rig this out uh, the way that you can thanks to the size thanks to the small footprint. Now photos out of this are going to be just as fantastic as always. We don't really need to talk about that. If you had an X-T4, if you've had an X-3, uh, it's got the exact same sensor, but it has the upgraded processor in this camera, which I am a fan of. It's the same one, the X-H2, X-H2S, and the X-T5. It's going to allow a lot better tracking due to algorithms and due to the AI processing software. And so yeah, it's going to be able to track animals, cars, whatever, and of course humans and their eyes. And it hasn't failed me. We're getting to a point whenever it comes to autofocus where honestly, if you're failing in autofocus with one of the big four, Canon, Sony, Nikon, um, or Fujifilm uh, cameras, if you're, auto, if you're not able to nail focus using autofocus, it's probably user error or there's just a lot of information going around and you trusting autofocus with a lot of different heads, a lot of different eyes, a lot of different things walking in and out instead of trusting a manual focus lens is your own decision and at that point it's your own fault if something fails. But uh, yeah, the autofocus is great, it's reliable, and honestly, no notes. Fujifilm just knocked this camera out of the park. So I've used this in Greenville, South Carolina, doing a lot of talking head, a lot of running gun video. <laughs> small rig rig, a lot of documentary work, um, and I've got some footage from that as well with a couple of personal projects that I've shot here in my own home studio, and as well running out and about. And again, I've just got to tell you, the images coming from this 6.2K are absolutely beautiful. And the ability for me to get that same beautiful image, whether or not it's pretty stripped down like this with a 28 millimeter Summicron, which this is fantastic, it gives me about a 41, 42 millimeter field of view. Uh, this setup is great, it's lightweight, it's small, and again, 
again, able to pull focus very easily. Um, the LCD on this is more than enough to be able to accurately pull focus. And the F-Log2 and the ability to uh, edit that gamma, uh, that gamma curve, it, it is just, it's packing a lot in this little camera and I absolutely love what I'm getting from it. And then if I wanna rig this thing out. Here with my buddy, John. We're about to record a quick little video. You're not seeing him because the eye tracking is on me. But uh, right here, got the man himself. And recording him is the XS20 uh, with the small rig build out uh, that we displayed a little bit later. And this light right here from small rig, this is the RC60, a little cob light, um, and a nice little parabolic umbrella. But this is the setup for recording all this. Very cool setup. My name is John Hendrick. I'm originally from New York City and I'm living now in San Antonio. I recently retired from the military. Uh, I grew up in New York, as I said, um, and you know, college student, working. Then I joined the military at 23 years old. So it was 1998, August. Uh, so for the last 23 years, I was a uh, combat medic, stemming off of uh, 23 years being in the military as a medical guy. Um, what people don't realize, and I'll just say it for context, is that uh, in the Navy, us medical guys are attached to Marines. So I've been in combat, and I think um, outside of all the years prior to photography, which was more of like reportage, lifestyle, shooting home stuff, and friends and family, I think uh, leaving the military and now being retired and focusing on photography, I think I tried to see a better light than what I was exposed to for 23 years. You know, being in the military, being a combat medic, I've seen a lot of bad. I've seen what the worst of what uh, mankind can do uh, in, in short glimpses. So I try to now focus on what people may call the mundane, uh, the simpler things in life and then like every other street photographer some candid moments But you know, I try to just reflect on I guess good moments as much as I can color um, design um, I'm a kid from the 80s growing up in the 80s and the 90s and like pop culture of New York City So, you know, that's we're talking Keith Haring the Bajas movements and stuff like that. So um I think a lot of that has stuck to me, you know? So I think without even realizing it, it's probably why I shoot the way I do. I started when I was skating, we'll say when I was eight years old in New York and uh, either with the camera or in front of the camera. And I'm now 48, so a couple of years. <laughs> and build it bigger to be able to last a little bit longer, attach a battery, put on an actual cinema lens, uh, things where I'm running and gunning and need to be a, be a little bit more creative, need to have a different look, or more importantly, just need to be able to hit critical focus with a monitor, I can rig this out and it is still super duper light. And I'm actually going to show you that. A small rig sent over a few pieces of gear, but a majority of the things that are going to be shown in this video where I'm building a rig with this from small rig are actually my own. I purchased all of them. Small rig uh, provided a V-mount battery and the V-mount plate to mount the battery and small rig provided a small rig case for the XS20 since this is Fuji Films and not my own. And um, yeah, we're gonna put that together. So now we're gonna come together, we're gonna build out this rig. And uh, while I'm building it, you're going to see just how easy it is to make this thing beefy. A lot of people have a gigantic worry that if their camera's too small, that people won't take them serious. And in photography, don't really ever run into that problem. But in videography, I actually have ran into it. So we're gonna build that out right now using some stuff from Small Rig, some stuff from Newer, some plates from Nicey Rig, but more importantly, the XS20 to be our base. First thing we're gonna start off with is a cage. This is from Small Rig itself. And on the side and on the top, I've got a couple of things. First off, I have a Small Rig micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. This is gonna make it to where we don't have any extra stress on that tiny HDMI port. And on the very top, we have a NATO rail. Now I like to use NATO rails because it makes it easier to take things on and off. And I also have one of these that has a little uh, 15 millimeter rail mount so that I can attach a follow focus if I'm using cinema glass. So it's very simple. I'm gonna Gonna slide this over it's really self-explanatory on how to attach these two you're just going to attach the quarter 20 screws from there I'm going to make this contraption right here and all this is is a 50 watt battery 
from small rig. It's got some nice ports on the very top. It's got an eight volt out, a 12 volt out, a USB-C and a USB-A, as well as D-tap on the side. This is gonna cover everything and the best part is this charges through USB-C. But to get this mounted, we're going to do a couple things. Now, small rig provided this little plate right here, which is just a regular dummy V-mount plate, does nothing else, it just holds the V-mount. And then I have these two cheese plates from uh, Nicey Rig. These Nicey Rig cheese plates are about six dollars uh, and eleven dollars uh, respectively. I have a little bit of a buffer right here with some uh, foam tape and yeah these just go into each other. So now that we have this together we're actually going to mount it to the bottom of our Fujifilm XS20. Pop out this screen beforehand. Uh, we don't want anything uh, closed in on the back number one so we can view our information right here and number two so the camera doesn't overheat in the 6.2k uh, open gate so once you have it on it's gonna look like this still pretty bare bones but we're gonna add something to the bottom and it's gonna be a little Arca Swiss uh, kind of foot adapter from small rig so it has these four little feet right here so that you actually have a base to put uh, this thing down on tables whatever this thing has been great I have loved it and it gives a really nice solid feel to your rig so we're gonna add that next but the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add a top handle and it's got some cables on here one cable to actually run our port keys uh, this is our PT52 uh, and it's also got an HDMI cable from Condor Blue. So because we have the natal rail, all we have to do is just slide that bad boy on and we are set. I'm gonna plug this Condor Blue cable into our micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. So the full HDMI goes in here. Notice there's no stress, no uh, pinching, no angling of that cable. And this end goes over here. So again, it's less likely you're gonna damage your good, expensive, nice cable. Now on this small rig handle, I also have a small rig little friction mount that holds the port keys. And I have a newer little cold shoe. And the reason why I have this not a small rig is because it's just a lower profile. And I slide on my Godox. A receiver on here I have a uh, you know wireless mics and it goes here and then the audio will plug in down here at the bottom it just makes it easier to be able to look at top see my levels and just continue to run and gun now this might be a little bit overkill but for this example we're going to be using this DD d4 and this microphone holder that goes into cold shoes from small rig if I want to add a cinema lens with this I actually can and it's one of the things that I like to do specifically with a certain cinema style lens that I love the character I love the look but that's the 25 millimeter uh, T1.5 from SLR Magic and on this is also something else I purchased myself But it is this small rig mini matte box and this lens is fantastic But it easily goes on the very front right there And that's whenever you start going from this to something that looks a little bit more beefy for those of you that are looking to impress a client So this right here is not only my running gun usually whenever I'm working on documentary work But also my talking head setup. I absolutely love this lens and it's easy to be able to kind of just hold everything it's small enough this grip is more than beefy enough the weight is centered it's perfect having my hand here on the bottom these little feet right here help me I'm able to still control the focusing ring as well as the aperture there is no obstruction nothing pinching Fujifilm has done a really great job but one of the things that this camera specifically makes me wish is that Fujifilm would make a lower megapixel meaning a 26 megapixel censored cinema-esque body, almost like what the FX30 and the uh, FX3 actually give you, or more importantly, or more akin to actually the Blackmagic cinema cameras. A body that has different ports, a body that has just the amount of buttons you need, maybe a built-in ND filter, a dedicated white balance button, a dedicated ISO button, a dedicated filter button, and then beyond that, a more square body made out of metal on the external as well that works great with heat dispersion that is able to record their 6.2K open gate a little bit more smoothly and without overheating issues. I do run into some overheating issues sometimes if I don't have the high heat temperature warning turned to on and it's just on the regular it's never shut off on me but it is something to look out for this is just a beautiful camera and for me this actually fits my workflow the best I travel a lot I like to only have a carry-on and one personal item and so this makes it easy to carry all this gear and again it's small and it's lightweight I can tear this down and use it in the way that I had it earlier with the Sumicron to where people think it's you know unassuming and they're not worried about it or I can beef it up if I need to when I need to based on the situation or based 
focused on the clientele. Fujifilm accidentally made a camera that is the best of both worlds. It is both professional featured and consumer looking, and because of that, you're able to get more done or do more in situations where I assume people would give you weird looks. And one of the great things about this camera, which is one of the great things about videography, is now this is so small that I'm able to take it in some places I otherwise wouldn't, and it's gonna help inspire me more in the photography sense. You see, cinematography over the last few years has become a really big part of my photography and a really big part of the way that I compose, the way that I uh, edit color, and the way that I see things and I layer my objects. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, Napoleon Dynamite, uh, Tenet, Interstellar, um, of course I barely uh, watch The Godfather, but movies like that where things are just absolutely beautiful, where things are set up in a way that make me think and make me want to go out and make images in the same way that inspire me, those do more for me than any photo book could ever do. Shout out Ansel Adams, one of the greatest portrait and documentary photographers of all time. Great camera, great setup, amazing thumbnail. Uh, this is right here where the money is. So I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Hope you guys like it. If you have a rig like this, please let me know. Send it to my Instagram. You don't even have to comment here. I'm more than interested to see what you're running, see how you're running and gunning yourself. Take it live, but take it and have a good one.